All right. This week in indoor football, we got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of good things, a lot of interesting things, and a couple of bad things, maybe. It depends. Um, so, first things first, IFL, lots of good games this week. Actually, not really. I, now that I really think about it, you know, because you know, Monday kind of ended on a whimper, but that game just finished up between Bay Area and Vegas, which really was pretty much uncompetitive. I think Bay Area, you know, is going to be uncompetitive, you know, despite the fact that they've done a lot of they they've done they, Bay Area's done some things, but you know, it, it, it's it's just not a good team. I don't think like. With the Naz Wranglers are competitive, you know, that's saying something. That's really saying something. Duke City's on a, on a, they're on a downward spiral. Massachusetts is playing well, you know. Iowa apparently has attendance issues and stuff like that. I like a lot of teams have attendance issues, but I get it. You know, it's kind of early in the season. A lot of people aren't really focused, you know, on indoor football at this time. It's, you know, March Madness, you know. You know, Final Four was this weekend. WrestleMania was this weekend in DFW, so that's why Frisco's game definitely wasn't getting you know anything you know at all. And again, it was a Friday night as well, so you know things you know weren't going too well. And then like Tucson had some injuries, I think too, because I mean that game was supposed to go way better than I thought it would, and it just did not go the way it was supposed to go. So. Uh, but in any case, IFL pretty good, pretty good slate this week. Uh, got a got a good slate next week as well. Cannot wait for all the games from Friday to Sunday afternoon. And man, CIF as well. CIF's doing their thing as well. Finally got all the non-league games out of the way, so things are you know nice and tidy there. You know, so except for Wyoming, they 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 uh. Wyoming's just not, not good. speaking of Wyoming, they've got their new head coaches and everything like that. You know, former Spokane head man Cedric Walker, Chris Robertson, also from Tri Cities, the AWFC champion of 2021. Uh, those are two of the more notable coaches that Wyoming has. Both Salina and Omaha's coaches, I've got their names already. Uh, they've been suspended for two league games. I believe Omaha and Salina had a non-league game in, in between, you know, last week and now, but next two league games, next two games that actually matter, those guys will be suspended, so. Um, in the, uh, in the IFL as well, there's also something that has been settled. That is the AFL's bankruptcy case. That has been pretty much settled for the most part, I believe. At least that's what sources have been telling, um, at least a lot of us. Because I mean, I'm sitting here like, where, where was this? Where, where was this article at? It's like, like, give me, give, give me that article. Um, to where I can find it. But it seems like um, it was from a tweet, actually. Um, I forgot who it was, but IFL guys, you know, you know. It, it, they're they're good, but you you want those AFL guys, you want those Arena Football League guys that have been in the Arena Football League for God knows how long. Like, uh, yeah, you want those guys, and now the IFL can get those guys. Starting honestly, right now they could there could be guys getting signed right now. I know there's a Duke City player, Dello Davis, that's also you know clamoring. He wants to go someplace. And hopefully he gets his opportunity someplace else because he got because I mean a lot of guys are getting cut left and right, so, you know, you know it, it just is how it is. That's the nature of the game. You guys are getting cut left and right. So, um, yeah, but yeah, IFL they can sign AFL guys now from the leftovers of 2019. So the NAL doesn't have to be the only guys talent getting all the AFL talent. And everything, so there you go. All right, let's move on to the lead that's kind of stuck in between, you know, the big three and the other leagues, the FCF. Now, there's a rumor. I'm not sure if it's confirmed yet. And you got, you also got the FCF feuding with Skip Bayless. Like, why? 
like, like for once, Skip Bayless actually said a logical take, and he was he, he was exa- as exasperated as everybody else has been about Terrell Owens coming to the FCF. If he's joining the Zappers, that that I, I, I don't even know. Like, like it's been quite some time. Like, you know, I think Terrell Owens is a Dallas Cowboy and a Philadelphia Eagle. You know, mostly his time in Dallas, but you know. Um, you know, you just don't think because I mean, I I do remember he was on an IFL team I think back in like 20, 2010 or something like that. Uh, it was it, it had to have been him because I can't remember anybody else that has you know that kind of star power you know be on an IFL team like that. But you know, if he joins the Zappers and everything, that brings some kind of credibility. He might only play one game, but I mean that that's some credibility right there. I mean the FCF. Is gaining credibility, but in also the wrong ways as well. I mean, they got positive things, they got the negative things, but the negatives, for me at least, have been outweighing the positives, and the negatives are really keeping me back from watching the FCF in the future. So I, I, I don't know. Like if this if this happens, you know, cool. If it doesn't, whatever. Um, anyway, let's move on to the other stuff, the other leagues, the lower tier leagues and everything like that. The Arena Pro Football League is down to three teams. The Reading Raptors, they won't play this year. Kind of sucks that they won't play because the APFL has been in flux with all the teams, you know, again, leaving and, you know, either leaving and coming back like Jersey or just flat out leaving or flat out dissolving, you know, due to various reasons and everything. Well, some of these have stemmed from COVID, some of these probably stem from people having no money. And I mean, some things are just, you know, like no arenas. I mean, it just is what it is. So Charlotte has released a schedule with um, them and West Michigan on it. And those two teams play four times. I believe, and there's like a trio of non-league games for the APFL. So, what happened to Jersey? Um, that that is a question because um, Jersey's supposed to be in this league. So, where are they at? So, I mean, I, I did I didn't see I didn't see them on there. So, where are they at? Um, somebody tell me. Anything, anything APFL? Because I mean. All of, the, all of these leagues, again, remember, all of these leagues split off from the AAL and the AAL guys from that interview that I keep trying to bring up, you know, Dukon and everything, because, I mean, Dukon's the best guy in, 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 the, in the arena indoor analysis game, you know. Um, I, I keep trying to bring it up, like, like I, I, don't, I don't think, you know, like, like all these splits were... On completely different terms, I think, and I, I I do think that these splits have been bad decisions. They've been some really bad decisions. We've talked about them all summer long, and stuff like not summer, not stupid winter long. We've been talking about them all winter long, and you know these splits are just they don't make any sense. Um, now some news dropped this afternoon. Shout out to our guy Arena Teams. Um, the NIF has lost several more teams. It w- my notes say four, but they have three teams left now. Um, like the Apaches are gone, the Gateway Blue Jackets are gone, um, and I forgot the other league, the other team in the league. Let me check real quick who it was that's also gone from this league. Because again, the NIF, you know, they were a league, you know that. You know, they, they've had all this stuff that they keep trying to line up, and it's not working out the way that they want to. Because, I mean, there's there are so many things that they were saying you need, needed to line up. And I'm sitting here like, why? Why are we why are we doing this? Why are we doing Why are, Why is there so much nonsense happening here? So, you know, uh, the Renegades are gone. Um, you know. The Apaches, the Westchester Apaches are gone, so now it's only the Kentucky on a curse, the Chicago Power, and the Central Illinois Royals in the league. At least it should be, you know, by this time, because of being Westchester, 
is out. Well, Westchester is out, so. I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand what the NIF is doing. Like, I really don't. I really don't understand. Um, it is what it is. It is what it is. The AIFA, the American Indoor Football Alliance. Remember, I think I think I linked that video. No, wait, no, I did. I didn't link that other video. That Locked In Magazine dude did. Uh, but Mississippi, at least the Mississippi Raiders have said, and I forgot where they post this, but they said that the next game will be April twenty third. So that that kind of seems about right but the AIFA still has not released a full schedule yet like teams have released like at least I think the Carolina Predators have released a home schedule but nobody's actually released the league schedule kind of need to do that it is April now so you know you know we already had the kickoff classic that that's been that I guess that was fun or something like that because I mean uh, who knows how the event actually went down in Jackson, Mississippi, but uh, something something's got to give. Something's got to give, and you got to release the schedule, guys. You know, you guys also split off from the AL. You guys, need the, if you guys say that you want to be, you know, this top league and everything like that, you got little rinking deep TV deals and stuff like that that nobody watches. Because I mean, who watches all sports network or whatever it's called? Who watches that? Nobody watches that channel. <laughs> I mean, it just is what it is. Like you gotta, you gotta promote it, and I don't see no promotion. Like, like there's like stretches of days where I don't see no promotion. So you know, if you want to be that successful, you gotta promote every day. Every day, the grind is every day. Like, like the APFL's Twitter has like somebody's name in it. I think like it's like somebody's name, and then it's like at gmail.com or something like that in the name like i'm sitting here completely confused like why like why is this there and then you know there's only like two tweets there as well on the apfl twitter so it's just like why come on step up your game you say you want to be this you say you want to be this big time big shot step up your game you know like you know there again there is a there is a market for indoor football there is a market for arena football it's out there you just gotta step up your game. And like, why else do you think? Why else do you think there's only like a couple teams that have lasted for 20 years? They step up their game. So it just is what it is. And then you got the Federated Arena League. You know that league with the uh, Palmetto Colts. Um, it's really you know and Georgia Lena, the Lions. You know the same Georgia Lena that we talked about back in 2020. Remember the COVID season? Yeah, that. The only way to watch arena football in 2020 was the COVID season. And it was terrible. It was still terrible to this day. And, you know, Georgia Lena um, and Palmito are the two teams of the Federated Arena League. And they only have two games scheduled against each other. Disappointing, but not surprised. It really, you know, with all these EIF games, you know, just say you're a part of the EIF at this point. Because, I mean... I, I do not understand this team at all, or out of both, both these teams anyway. Like Georgia Lena's got a new logo and everything like that. I think because like it doesn't match what Palmito has put on the schedule, so it, it just doesn't make any sense. A lot of open dates, you know, only six games. It's disappointment after disappointment after disappointment because this is another league that you know was also technically a splinter from the AL. Because of Peach State, because they were in the AAL, so and yet, I guess where they are now, the EIF. So I don't understand. And then you got the Oregon High Desert Storm. They've hired a new GM slash coach in Ryan Doty. I have no idea who this guy is, but hopefully he does well out up there in Oregon, because they have to fire their, their other coach, and they got like a new defensive coordinator and stuff as well. So you know. Good on them. Good on Oregon because, I mean, you know, the AWFC, I haven't been really keeping up with the AWFC at all. I know there's other guys that do a lot better with keeping up. So, that, that lead there, you know, AWFC, they're, they're, they're moving along pretty nicely despite the fact that, you know, they got two travel teams instead of, you know, six teams playing in six arenas. But, in any case... The AWFC is kicking 
and doing their thing. They're going along through the motions. So with that being said, this week in indoor football is this episode's done. I will see you all next Sunday, late in the afternoon, early evening. You know, get your evening snacks ready for this week in indoor football next Sunday, and we'll be doing a lot of stuff the next week. You know, it won't. I probably won't upload for the rest of the week, so I'll just say that right now. Um, you know. Again, if you watch the channel update, which you should, you know, probably won't be uploading for the rest of the week. So I'll see you all on Sunday. Take care. Have a good week. And I'll see you soon.